The vampire is someone who was once mortal, someone who was once alive, but are now undead. Vampires are beings who survive off the blood of mortals, who burn in sunlight and are considered evil by most societies on Tamriel. Vampires can also choose to feed on other blooded beings, such as animals, but prefer the blood of mortals, as it seems to give them the most needed satisfaction of thirsts, as opposed to animals. Vampires are often mistaken for a reanimated corpse, however similar, but are a solitary species by many differing aspects. Vampires are misunderstood by much of Tamriel, and are usually hunted, hated, or in most civilized settings, even being a vampire could put an individual in bars or put to death. Some vampires are high-functioning, and are near impossible to tell apart from a mortal counterpart, but others are much more feral and recognizably vampires. To some, vampirism is a blessing. Immortality and many different powers are gifted to vampires. However, vampirism has its curses as it has its blessings, weakness to light and fire, along with an insatiable desire for blood. Curing vampirism is not impossible nor unheard of, but incredibly difficult and hard to come by. Very few professionals exist whose expertise is in vampirism, let alone curing it. Much knowledge on how to cure vampirism has even been hidden in many societies, as many believe it could tempt people into becoming a vampire if they knew there was an easy way out with a cure. Vampires, out of many different classifications of undead, are some of the most feared because of their power. While many fear vampires because of their undaunting proficiencies in magic, speed, and strength, undoubtedly most mortals fear vampires because of the risk of also getting infected with its highly contagious disease that all vampires are equipped with in battle. Becoming infected with vampirism is told to be a pain greater than death should the knowledge of just one vampire be loose among the populace of a village, it can cause immense disorder and chaos, and the fear of one's own neighbor. There are three vampiric diseases that which infect mortals, porophyric hemophilia, sanguinare vampiris, and noxophilic sanguivoria. Each disease is the direct infection of vampirism, but are contracted in different ways, and have their own severity of ill effects. Vampires are also feared because, unlike most undead, vampires are still attuned to mortal understanding and intelligence, and possibly even more so than the average mortal. There are hundreds of different organized clans and different variants of vampires across Tamriel. Those who are turned into vampires, their first victims tend to be friends, family, or other close acquaintances, because some do not realize they are infected, or wait too long during the incubation window of the disease to permanently and effectively alter them. Vampires, to the trained eye, can be differentiated between an unfected mortal and a vampire. Vampires are typically and unusually pale, their canines are much sharper and pointed, and some strains of vampires have glowing red eyes until their thirst for blood is sated. Vampires are immune to age and disease. Vampires may be immortal in terms of age, but are not immune to death, and can only typically be killed with the meeting of a violent end. Some of the oldest vampires are known as ancients, ranging from hundreds to thousands of years old. Upon contact with the sun and flame, a vampire's skin burns. When vampires meet their end, the dust that is gathered from their corpses can be used for a variety of alchemical purposes, such as turning oneself invisible. It is also told that vampires, upon entering a place of holy divine worship, can feel inexplicable pain. A vampire's specific abilities it is capable of is determined by the strain of vampirism they are infected with. Most vampires are nocturnal and sleep during the day because of the ill effects that the sun typically has on them. Each clan varies in the victims they target, the way in which they feed or harvest blood, and many other differentiations between clans. Many vampires feed on those who are asleep, charmed, or a spell that essentially makes mortals their thralls. 
Pureblood vampires are vampires who have received their ailment directly from the Daedric Prince, Molag Bal himself. Molag Bal is often referred to as the kinfather of vampires, and vampires can even be considered his children. These purebloods also go by the name Daughters of Cold Harbor if they are female. The term Daughters of Cold Harbor derives from Molag Bal's Plain of Oblivion, known as Cold Harbor. Daughters of Cold Harbor are also innately able to turn into vampire lords as well. Purebloods are typically of higher social status within the vampiric societies. Purebloods are likely responsible for the many different half-breeds and strains that exist across Tamriel, although one clan, the Volkihar clan, were all infected with the same strain. Purebloods may also possess different abilities from that of other vampires, although typically look quite similar in appearance to vampires of lesser status. The children of purebloods may also possess similar abilities to their parents or grandparents, but as the progeny continues, it lessens. Vampires get their nutrition and sustenance from blood, rather than food as mortals would. This thirst, unlike a normal hunger pang to a mortal, is ravenous and may even cause physical or mental pain to them. A study conducted by Tamrielic scholars, in which they infected plants with vampirism, yielded that they produced a similar desire and thirst for blood instead of water. A particularly strong vampire can go ages without drinking blood. However, they will become weak and quite feral. But other vampires may even become stronger without drinking blood. Some vampires can fall into a deep coma without blood after a given time. Some bloodlines are known to make their appearance more mortal looking after consuming blood, or apply regenerative and healing properties. If a vampire doesn't kill their victim, the chance of leaving the victim with vampirism is quite high, but doesn't always spread to the victim 100% of the time. Blood may not be necessary to keep vampires alive or healthy. Some construe that vampires drain a victim's life force to replenish their own life force. Vampires can technically classify as parasites, and if they only have one source of food, they prefer to keep it alive and only kill their victims if there's plenty to go around, or if it means that there could be one less witness. There are two known bloodlines of vampires who are able to completely restrain themselves from killing their victims upon drinking from them, although this is more out of pride and disdain, and those who are essentially thralls or cattle to vampires are told to suffer a fate worse than death itself by being used as livestock. Despite popular belief, vampires can consume normal and natural mortal food but gain nothing of nutrition from it as a normal mortal would. The book titled The Opusculus Lame Bal Tametsimorti speaks of where the origins of vampirism first began, with the Daedric Prince Molag Bal. It begins with Molag Bal holding a severe hatred for Arke, the god of cycles such as the seasons, life, and death. Molag Bal, out of his hatred for the cycles that Arke had placed on the world, manifested on Nern which was still in its early eras and newly formed at the time, and discovered a Nidic woman named Lame Bilfag. Molag Bal viciously raped this poor woman and departed back to oblivion. Lame was discovered by a nomadic tribe. They had nursed and cared for her to try to alleviate her health and stress after this horrific event. Eventually, she had mysteriously died in the nomad's care. The nomads decided to cremate her. However, before they could carry this out, Lame arose from death and in her madness had horrendously murdered the group of nomads. Lame was known as the first daughter of Cold Harbor, and she decided to share her gift of vampirism with others. Vampirism quickly spread across Tamriel, in the end scorning Arke's cycles of life and death. To vampires, Lame is known as Blood Matron Lame, Lame Bal, and simply the Blood Matron. Unknown to the nomads who had cared for her, Lame did not actually die, but she was actually strangely and rapidly healing from all wounds she had suffered. This had scared the Natick tribes, and out of fear of whatever disease she possessed, they decided to cremate her to prevent it from spreading. 
Once Lame had ended her vicious onslaught on the tribe, she had no sooner realized what she had done and at what she had become. Lame turned to RK for forgiveness in her atrocities, but was given no answer. In her anger and insanity, that is when she decided to infect every and all she came across, and especially targeted RK's worshippers. Since this, many mortals have prayed to Malagbal and made pacts with him to gift them this disease, creating the many different bloodlines and variants that is known today. Since the time of Lame, many cults dedicated to Malagbal conduct sacrifices to him. Many of these sacrifices offer females to Malagbal on the 20th of Evening Star, the summoning day of Malagbal. Few women survive this brutal ritual, and those who do survive surface as pure-blooded vampires, or rather, daughters of Cold Harbor. Those who were selected as sacrifices to Malagbal, upon rejection or refusal to participate, were met with brutal punishment. In the First Era, one of the few remaining Snow Elves named Verther spoke of a prophecy called the Blood of Cold Harbor's Daughter will blind the Eye of the Dragon. This prophecy also went by the name the Tyranny of the Sun. This ancient prophecy predicts the eternal darkening of the sun, casting a shadow across Nern for eternity. This prophecy was taken to extreme by Lord Harkon of the Volkihar clan in northeastern Skyrim. He planned on sacrificing the blood of his daughter, Serana, in order to carry out the deeds of the prophecy. Valerica, Harkon's wife, was against his evil principles and fled to the Soul Cairn, along with sealing her daughter for hundreds of years within an ancient Nordic ruin. This significantly hindered Harkin's plan of domination of the sun. In other cultures, such as the Dunmeri Tribunal Temple Doctrine, vampirism has another version of origin. This version tells of Molag Bal creating the first vampire after he had defeated a powerful foe in combat and had arose the vampire from its corpse. The foe that which Malagbal slew is debated. Some tales say it was a powerful Daedra Lord, while others say it was a temple saint or a powerful beast. However, these tales only exist in Morrowind and are not taught outside of the province. Many stories have different truths to them, such as the Volkihar clan, who were given their vampirism directly from Malagbal himself as well. Across all cultures, vampirism is known to correlate with Malagbal, even as displayed in his artifact of the Mace of Malagbal, that is also sometimes called the Vampire's Mace. This mace absorbs the enemy's magicka, similarly to how a vampire would absorb the power from a mortal. Even phenomenon that isn't particularly related to vampires, that have absorbing effects, are sometimes named after vampires because of their consuming nature, such as the vampiric cloud spell, the ebony blade which is also sometimes called the vampire, and the vampiric ring. Any wound that is inflicted from a vampire has a chance of becoming infected with vampirism. However, not many documented cases of how vampirism is contracted have survived as many who encounter vampires do not live to tell the tale, and so the exact process of infection is not fully understood. For the first 72 hours of infection is when those who are infected display symptoms. Symptoms range from a variety of ill effects, especially visible signs of restlessness, and it is in this time that it is the best time to take action against it to seek a cure, such as disease healing potions or praying at an Adric altar. After this window of time, it is when the disease is said to be impossible or near impossible to cure. This is when the disease essentially kills the victim, and yet lets them live as they are now undead. Although this is when a vampire has truly taken form, it is possible to cure it, but incredibly difficult to come by. Some who have been infected with vampirism have told that upon becoming undead, they awaken in a tomb. Others, such as Lame Bal, actually take on a strange and rapid healing process instead of a slowly dying process, though there is a source that states she did in fact die before her transition to a fully-blooded vampire. Although vampirism is typically a blood-transmitted disease, 
Vampirism is contracted in multiple ways, and can also be transmitted through reproduction. The journal of Lord Leviticus tells of how he, as an imperial vampire, impregnated an orc female, resulting in a half-orc child. However, it is not quite known if the orc child had received the disease or any other powers associated with vampirism. Vampires spread their disease through bites, scratches, or their vampiric drain spells. Although depending on the bloodline, this varies. Lame Bielfog's bloodline requires that the vampire gives them their blood after draining the victim of theirs. Many Dunmary scholars believe that vampirism is impossible to cure. Although a mer named Galarathari had come forth that he had been cured. In his writings, he states that during his days of being a vampire, Molagbal had come to him with a quest, and only after the completion of this quest would Molagbal reward him with a cure. Although eventually, due to social pressure from the tribunal temple, he had come forth stating that this tale was not true. There is another tale telling of how an individual had managed to get cured through Molagbal, but through a loop actually managed to get a cure from Vermina instead. This tale also suggests that vampirism may have a connection to Vermina, but since her sphere of dreams and nightmares governs all that the immortal mind can imagine, it is not far from belief. One way vampirism is told to be able to be cured is to kill the vampire who had began the bloodline to begin with, known as the Bloodfather. However, discovering the identity and location of the Bloodfather is no easy task, and upon commencement of this, could possibly cure the entire clan and individual who stems from that bloodline, and some even immediately die because of their incredibly old age they had only successfully reached because of their vampirism. Some former vampires throughout history have told of themselves becoming cured, but never stated exactly how. One method that came forth was to bathe in water that was soaked entirely with an alchemical agent known as purge blood salts. Witches who operated in the Iliac Bay region were targeted by the Mage's Guild because they had developed a cure for the disease. The cure they had developed was a potion that was concocted from six cloves of garlic, two shoots of blood grass, five leaves of nightshade, the blood of Nargonian, and the ashes collected from a powerful vampire. These ingredients had also been collected to cure the Count of Skingrad's wife of vampirism, as she was in a coma. Although upon curing her, she immediately died. One clever method that was developed to combat spreading vampirism to begin with was a potion that essentially turned the user's blood to a kind of poison that made it undrinkable to vampires, and would even kill the vampire who attempted to drink from said mortal. Throughout history, there have been numerous accounts of strange rituals, concoctions, and cures that have been developed throughout history. Some seem to work, and others with fatal penalties. In the Fourth Era, a powerful and esteemed Redguard wizard named Falion had developed a cure for vampirism. This ceremony involved the use of a filled black soul gem, and calling upon the forces of Oblivion. However, Falion is quite secretive involving his studies, and not much else is known about the ritual other than that. Another way to technically cure vampirism is through contracting a different overriding disease, lycanthropy, although this is often the least desirable option as it comes with its own curse. Since Molag Bal is the origins of vampirism, many vampires worship him. Although Molag Bal is not the only Daedric prince in the line of worship for vampires, the vampiric clans of Cyrodiil tend to worship Clavicus Vile, as it was Clavicus who gifted them the ability to blend in so well with mortals. The bloodline of Lame is told to thank Hercyn for their ability to withstand the powerful rays of the sun, though this is debated among many scholars of Tamriel. The many vampiric clans that which dot Tamriel are usually sectioned by their bloodline and established territories. The bloodline is determined by who it was who gave them the vampiric disease. Clans typically conclude of entirely one bloodline, or vampires who share crop. 
Some major complexes of vampiric clans have their own cattle, thrall system, prisoners, and other mortals they can use at their disposal. Lame, being the first vampire, was able to create a bloodline of her own as well. Vampires within her bloodline share the strain of vampirism known as Noxophilic Sanguivoria, rather than the other two strains. This particular strain allows for vampires to not burn or become weak in sunlight, and once night falls, they simply become even more powerful than their daytime counterparts. One way to get this particular strain of vampirism is through something known as the Rite of the Skyan, in which the victim in the equation's blood is replaced with Lames. These kinds of vampires are known as Skyans, and are some of the most powerful kind of vampires across Tamriel. Despite being vampires, this bloodline despises both Arkay and Molag Bal, given Lame's equal suffering caused by both deities. Other than her own, Lame had created multiple bloodlines that branched off into further sections and clans. This ability to create multiple branching bloodlines appears unique to her, specifically, as no other members of bloodlines have been able to create the kind of branching clans as she has been able to. While Noxophilic Sanguivoria seems to be specific to the vampires contracted by Lame, the other two vampiric strains are known as Porophyric Haemophilia and Sanguinare Vampiris. Sanguinare Vampiris is less common than the other two strains, and specifically seems to be more exclusive to Skyrim, whereas Porophyric Haemophilia is the strain seen in most provinces, and works mostly similarly to Sanguinare Vampiris. In Blackmarsh, there exists a clan known as the Wetfang Clan. They are observed to capture mortals alive, slip them into a coma using powerful magic, and allows these vampires to get the blood they need without unnecessary struggle from the victim. The vampiric clan within Cyrodiil admire the Wetfang clan for their intelligence, claiming they are more intelligent than other barbaric tribes. The Cyrodiilic clan, however, does consider the Wetfang clan a possible threat to their dominance. The clan of Cyrodiil is exclusive to one bloodline, although their original name is Forgotten in Time. These vampires are considered some of the most powerful in all of Tamriel, specifically noted with their ability to blend in with mortals so well. This clan is considered to be more civilized and sophisticated than other vampiric clans across Tamriel. The way they typically feed is when their victims are asleep, as they are especially gifted in the arts of stealth. One name this clan goes by is simply the Order. Many within the Order worship Malag Bal, as most vampires would, but it is also split between worshippers of Clavicus Vile. Those who are within the Order are sworn to never betray their clan or reveal their true identities. The Iliac Bay is home to many different bloodlines and clans, and each of these clans and bloodlines operate differently and each hold separate abilities. Some of the most popular and largest of these clans are the Anthotis, Garlithi, Harvenu, Hulari, Lyrezi, Montalian, Selenu, Thrafe, and Vraseth. Many of these clans are bitter and sworn enemies of another, given the density of the territories. Some vampires participated in a war of undead that dominated over the barony of Dwinin around the 253rd year of the Third Era. Lame Bielfog is responsible for many of these bloodlines within the area, namely the Lyrezi, Selenu, and Vraseth bloodlines. The clan known as the Montalian of the mouth of the Bojolsai River negotiate new members into their clan by letter and are told to have the power of teleportation, and are proficient at curing paralysis. This clan is prominent in Wayrest, Borian, Gavaudan, Sarakalam, Lanelin, and Mormoth. They are very accepting and welcoming to new vampires in their clan. The Vraseth clan are gifted with agility and dexterity, they dominate the regions of Daggerfall, Betany, Glenpoint, Cambria, Taloon, and Glenumbra. 
The Thrafe bloodline are able to cure their damaged tissue and wounds more so than other clans. They control the regions of Dania, Dwinin, Ikalon, and Irveus. The Garlithi clan are gifted in their abilities with magic, specifically reflecting damage, and they dominate the regions of Northmoor and Frigius. The Lyresi clan are especially gifted in the arts of invisibility, and can quickly and efficiently silence their enemy's magic. They control the regions of Alcair, Coegria, Menevia, Orsinium, the Rothgarian Mountains, and Balfiera. The Harvenu clan are especially dominant in the magical arts of destruction magic, and govern the regions of Anticlear, Elesen Hills, and Shalgora. Vampires within the Glemoral Coven reside in multiple cities stretched across High Rock. Although little information about their culture and society is known, one thing that is known about this clan is that they too are a possible rival clan to the Order of Cyrodiil, as they possess considerable intelligence in the way they operate, and it can be suggested that they too possess the immeasurable capability to blend in well with mortal society. During the Plainmeld, there existed a group of powerful vampires in the Rivenspire region of High Rock. This clan was skilled in the art of letting their victims live, as taught to them by the Altamari vampire named Count Ravenwatch. Count Ravenwatch believed that vampires and mortals could live together in peace and harmony, although even he had received his vampirism directly from Malag Bal as well. It is unknown if Count Ravenwatch's bloodline has survived the events following the Plainmeld or the Alliance War. Another group of vampires had resided in Rivenspire in the Second Era, who were under the leadership of a Breton nobleman named Baron Montclair from House Montclair. The Baron's wife had fallen gravely ill, and to save his wife, Montclair utilized an ancient alien artifact known as the Lightless Remnant. This artifact was unstable, and instead of healing Baroness Montclair, it instead turned his entire family into vampires, and the Baroness turned into a blood fiend, one of the most feral forms of vampires. Dissimilar to House Ravenwatch's ideals, the Montclair clan believed that vampires were far superior to mortals, and wished to gain complete control over Rivenspire. The Vestige had intervened with these events, and with the help of Shornhelm nobles and Count Ravenwatch, they were able to obliterate House Montclair, ending Baron Montclair's insanity and takeover. Since a lot of bloodlines within the Eliac Bay region seemingly all derive from Leme, if she were to be destroyed, a lot of these bloodlines would be cured of their vampirism. However, not all bloodlines seem affected by this, as evident when Lord Harkin of the Volkihar clan did not affect any of the other vampires of his bloodline upon his death. In Hammerfell, there exists the Salinu clan. This clan is completely resistant to elemental attacks and govern the region of Abibangora, Aya Sophia, Pothago, Sibiades, Sentinel, Cairo, and Mirkwasa. Another clan known as the Anthotis are incredibly intelligent and known for their intellect. They govern the regions of the Alakir Desert, Antiphylos, Bergama, Dakfron, and Tygonus. Lastly, the Kolari clan of Hammerfell are quite gifted in the arts of paralyzing their victims. They govern the regions of Santaki, Totamnu, Kozanset, Ephesus, and the Dragontail Mountains. Morrowind is strict on the laws involving necromancy, and vampires are quite rare. The Tribunal Temple is told to control knowledge involving vampires and what is available to the public regarding them. The Ordinators and Buoyant Armagers were responsible for vampire hunting, and were quite successful in this endeavor, as there is very little information regarding the existing bloodlines of Morrowind. There are three known bloodlines that exist in Morrowind, the Quara, the Burn, and the Onde clans, and these bloodlines differ greatly from each other. The Quara are quite ravenous and aggressive in nature, the Burn clan are more stealthy and clever in their nature, and the Onde consists mostly of mages, using their magic prowess to ensnare their victims. 
Each of these clans have their own headquarters, but are also sprawled out over different Daedric shrines, along with the Wameri and Dunmeri ruins alike. Strangely, these clans all have a shared hatred for those who are new and fresh vampires, and consider them abominations to their clans. Within the Red Mountain, the Ash Vampires were greatly used by Dagoth Ur, and were immortal and incredibly magic beings of immense power. These vampires, however, were unrelated to normal vampires, and technically do not classify even as undead. The numbers of vampires have been shown to increase, and multiple hunting parties are now told to exist in order to hunt them down. It is unknown if the growing numbers of vampires in Morwind have increased because of migrant activity of other vampiric clans outside of Morwind, or if long dormant clans have suddenly become more active or awakened in some way. However, after the events of Red Mountain and the Oblivion Crisis, it is unknown what the current status of these clans are. The Vulkihar clan of Eastern Skyrim are told to reside under frozen lakes and only leave their territory to feed. These vampires are known to have the powers of ice at their arsenal, with icy breath that can freeze an individual solid. These vampires do share abilities that other vampires are equipped with as well, such as invisibility, seduction, and night vision. Some in this clan are much more monstrous in appearance than others such as having ridged brows, slits upon their lips, and almost bat-like noses. These vampires do not burn in direct sunlight, but are severely weakened by it. Deathhounds are common guardians for the Volkihar vampire clan. Some of the more ancient and powerful of the Volkihar vampires, such as those who reside in Castle Volkihar, are those of purebloods, and can even transform into vampire lords, large winged creatures that are gifted by Molugbal himself. They are much more powerful in Vampire Lord form, and can levitate, and possess many other abilities. They can even summon gargoyles. Another group stationed in Skyrim is Movarth's Coven, led by a vampire who was once a vampire hunter, the ancient vampire Movarth Pequeen. Potema, the Wolf Queen, was told to rely on vampiric generals during the War of the Red Diamond. Valenwood is also home to multiple clans of vampires. The Bonsamu vampires are told to be near indistinguishable from mortals, unless viewed by candlelight. The Kirilth clan can transform into a vampiric mist of sorts. The Yekef are told to consume mortals whole and the Talboth clan seems to specifically prey on children. The Talboth are also able to disguise themselves as a child after they have taken them, and after which murder the rest of the members of the family. There are vampiric clans and bloodlines that exist within elsewhere and the Somerset Isles. However, little to nothing is known about them because of their secretiveness. The Saeci are commonly believed to be vampiric as well, as in many texts they mention them as vampiric serpent folk. This race are from the continent of Akavir, to the far east of Tamriel. Many tales mention how the Saeci had consumed, or have seemingly eaten, the race of humans who had resided on the continent as well, although this is not known if in a literal sense or in a more metaphorical sense. Another connection of vampirism is that the Saeci are told to be immortal, never dying of old age or disease. Two swords of Saecian origin are the Dawnfang and Duskfang, and these swords share similar vampiric features as their creators do.